Hey, welcome back guys. These stories are dropping faster than I can make videos on. So if you have already seen this information, I'm so sorry. Hopefully you can get something out of my take on it. I'm trying to bring this, I'm trying to bring light on this. Um, they haven't really made it easy under like a subsection. You kind of have to search their whole page. But they've been dropping stuff at an amazing rate on this Las Vegas. And um, the owner of the um, article, the actual writer of the article has stated that it's not known when he's going to actually drop his information and his investigative journalism that's been done. So nobody really knows when it happens. So I'm sorry, guys. I work very hard. I have two different jobs. I work at a pet resort and I also work at a, a gas station as my part-time job. So I'm really busy. I get like one day off every other week. So I'm trying to get this information out to you as fast as I see. But um, the FBI pinpoints new person of interest in Las Vegas shooting and then told to stand down and not pursue the suspect. This was post March 26, 2018. You guys, we're all Hawkeyes here. Everybody who's viewing is a Hawkeye. All you great commenters, and I love you all. You guys are freaking awesome because I don't have anywhere else where I can come to. And this is about to be the last place I can come to because their algorithm for speech is targeting any conservative or anybody that actually speaks truth. And subscribers of mine have been deleted. Um, unfortunately, Twitter is the worst. You can get your word out on Twitter the best, and uh, I did. I, I, I only lasted on Twitter about a week and a half. Um, from like now on, I only go on there and actually search like, information and watch the Donald because every day I would literally have 10 to 15 people deleted from my account and I tried hard day after day to post and tweet and I followed I started following about 268 people and they're not people that have junk information they're people like Stefan Molyneux, Paul Joseph Watson, Alex Jones, um, uh, The Drudge, uh, so the the president and I wake up one day and everything is deleted um in a couple weeks I wasn't even really that active but I guess what I was posting they didn't like um and my profile picture is me with a revolver and <laughs> it's kind of Illuminati style it's it's born a Hawkeye at Twitter and it's Southpaw underscore Yadoff that's my Twitter I'm never on there, but if you want to follow me, go follow me there. Maybe I'll start. But um, I, you know Jack Dorsey doesn't like the guns, and that really fucking upset the liberals that I have a, a revolver covering one eye, and then I have the left eye open, and it's a gun pointed right at them, and you can see the ammunition in the barrels. So um, they didn't like that. People got really intimidated and threatened by that, and they reported me. So I don't know. Um, YouTube is great. You guys are awesome. I'm gaining so much traction here, but let's get on. This is fear and lying in Las Vegas, fear and loathing in Las Vegas, fear and conspiracy in Las Vegas. Born a Hawkeye, we're all hawks. Hawks have the eyes. Our national bird is the eagle. Not a hawk, but birds have uh, uncanny uh, ability to um, flesh out sight and truth. They can see things. They can see here in Florida, when you watch a bird lunge down into the water and grab a fish out the water, they can see things before anybody else can see. They have an uncanny view, perceptive perception of view. So that's what we have here. I love y'all. Uh, like and subscribe. The hushed FBI investigation unfolding inside the FBI's public Broadway show version of the Las Vegas shooting investigation started when a witness claimed he hid outside Mandalay Bay in the bushes for hours after the stream of gunfire started raining down on concert goers on October 1st. The same man also claimed he was inside the room next door to the shooter when gunfire erupted on 22,000 country western fans, a.k.a. possible Donald Trump voters and supporters. Mostly Trump supporters. Oh, see, I put that in. Yep. At an outdoor concert in the shadow of MGM Resort's sprawling Mandalay Bay Resort. Okay, does anybody know... Uh, I'm sorry, I might get a little esoteric here, but the Illuminati have a card game. And on their card it, for v Vegas, it says Las Vegas, and they're stunningly accurate. It, it 
predicted 9-11. Um, Las Vegas shows a jack and an ace and a dancing lady. Um, we know that Jason Aldean from the concert has a J, A, Jack Ace card represented, and that's below a demonic sun. Some call it a demonic sun. It's a black sun. The sun is blacked out, representing um, Armageddon, representing the end of time, but it, it can also represent the minimal phase that the moon was in, and currently the sun is in a minimal phase. Um, but J as a value, Jack can mean, it can mean the value of 10 and ACE can also mean the value of one. J is the 10th letter of the alphabet. A is the first. So 10, 1, 10, 1. That's October 1st. Okay. Let's go to route 91, route 9, 1 harvest festival. All right, it's a harvest. You know that these satanic worshipers love their symbolism. They love the symbolism. Paddock, Paddock, his last name actually represents and means basically a stable where you keep your horses. So funny enough that they're in the Southwest, a lot of Trump supporters, a lot of cowboy hats, and his last name represents a stable where you keep your horses. Okay. Route 91 Harvest Festival in Las Vegas. We have the Illuminati card game showing JA, also for Jason Aldean. JA representing 10, 1 as the value of card numbers, representing J, 10th letter of the alphabet. A, first letter of the alphabet, 10, 1, October 1st. Route 91. 9, 1. This turns into 9, 11, people. I figured this out, and it's nobody has caught on to this. Route 9, 1. If you put the 9, 1, Next to the 10, 01, you get 9, 11, 01. Another 9, 11 performed at the base of a pyramid, the Luxor, which is the brightest light on the earth, beaming, showing a sign to the Illuminaries and the Illuminati. This was a ritual, all right? The capstone on there produces the an amazing amount of lumens, uh, of projected light up into space. It's it's the brightest light, basically, that points upwards. And um, we all know that the Aztecs all performed uh, rituals and they cut people's heads off and let them roll, the Mayans let the heads roll down the pyramid. This was all done at the base of a pyramid. And if you actually Google Earth it and you look behind the stage, you'll see two towers. I originally thought that these towers were elevator shafts for a building being built, but actually it's a scrapped program that they were about to... It, it was... Um, construction of a, a Ferris wheel. That's basically what it was. Uh, I don't believe they're building this Ferris wheel anymore. But it's just really eerie that you have these two looming towers. And to this day, I, I don't know if anybody was up there shooting as well. Those are tall ass towers. Um, we don't know. But um, Route 9191, put that next to 1001, 91101, 911. Oh, Lord. MGM Resort, Sprawling Mandalay Bay Resort. The same man who said he saw shooters sh um, saw shooters gun down a security guard outside the hotel suite he shared with Stephen Paddock, even though the information was never divulged publicly at the time. The same man who described the, to the news media minutes after the attack in detail the tools in Paddock's suite used for the attacks days before such physical evidence was released to the public. No, they'll never let us know. I'm so glad True Pun is doing this. The same man who went to great lengths using techniques few would know or employ absent training to mask his phone and social media accounts to shield his location before and during the attack. I know I have caught you guys off guard with talking about the whole esoteric thing, but this guy is a spy, all right? The only people, um, from what I've heard is he's talked to Australian media, but there's really no recordings or information recorded as to what this guy has spoken to about. They're saying that that second window on the adjoining room, this guy, it was his room, and he was there when it happened. There's numerous theories about him killing Paddock. Um, he was the employer of setting this whole thing up, which is why Pat, they think Paddock is on film looking. Body, body language experts have said he's very, very nervous, really nervous when he's with the bellhops carrying his bags up the uh, elevators. I would be too if I had, you know, like 
20 plus guns I was carrying up in a severely secure area which with security all over but uh, this is what this is about I'm sorry uh, and he masked his social media accounts to shield his location before and during the attack but my question is why has the media not spoken about this thank God good patriots within our journalism have actually dug down deep and talked to the FBI agents um, the same man FBI agents were never allowed to interview and told to forget about, despite pleadings from intelligence veterans that this individual was an imperative person of interest in the shooting and investigation. Quote, unquote, we cleared Mandalay Bay within two hours, one FBI agent recalled, while replaying the video of a witness statement over and over, searching for discrepancies. There was nobody hiding in any bushes. That was the first clue. Subsequent clues grew bigger and bolder. She's pretty. The agent found many additional statements that didn't match up with reality either. And other agents were likewise nailing down evidence that disputed the official FBI narrative curated by the FBI Las Vegas SAC Aaron Ruse. Oh, I'm sorry, Rouse. It's a ruse. This guy is such a deep state criminal. Disgusting, this this Aaron Ruse. And if you watch the videos of, of the... Um, Sheriff Joe Lombardo has the personality of a wet sock and super criminal. He is right behind him like a hawk and not us as hawks or hawk guys. He's a different hawk. He's not even a hawk. He's a freaking scavenger. He's disgusting. He's you could if anybody watches that and and cannot see anything different as opposed to you better uh, recite our narrative or else then they're absolutely crazy because the look in his eyes behind Joe Lombardo is from a movie it's it's this is crazy that reality is playing out like this so um Las Vegas SAC Aaron Rouse and his inner circle the official line continues to be the shooter Stephen Paddock was a mysterious lone wolf who had no help killing 58 people and maiming another 500 from his hotel suite perched on the 32 floor of the Mandalay Bay just two floors under the Four Seasons, owned by, yes, you guessed it, Saudi Arabian's prince at the time, Bin Talal, or no, um, uh, Al Walid. I'm sorry, I, 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 it, the name doesn't come up. Um, he did uh, have a spout with Trump on Twitter before the election, and he said that Trump was a fool. And he's a disgrace to America. And Trump tweeted back in a epic, epic tweet, in a status of conjecturing truth and fact. He said, "When I become president, you will no longer have the ability to affect America's elections from outside." So, bye bye. Basically, I'm sure Trump said it better. But yeah, they own the floors above that at the Four Seasons. And a lot of people said that they saw shooting coming from there. The whole talk about a Saudi Arabian prince, I don't know about that. I don't I don't understand it. I don't know. Um, I'm just reporting on facts that are actually verified by journalists who speak with FBI. He gambled too. Paddock was angry about something. Though no one in charge of the probe is saying exactly what. My speculation in the media is, and I used to be a pilot, I flew single engine Cessna 172 or also plus all, all glass cockpit Cessnas when I was from the age of 14 to 16. And uh, it was the best thing I ever did in my life. And if you guys are interested in flying, it's amazing, all right? I'm not afraid of heights unless I'm in my dreams. For some reason in my dreams, I'm horrified of heights because everything happens wrong and elevators and buildings start leaning bending in the wind and they act like i don't know it's really weird but like in reality i love heights i love roller coasters you guys can do your own first flight by um they'll give you a cd and you study what the ailerons the elevators the rudders are um where the throttle is and where your rudder placement is on your feet the brakes how they work and i think it was like 80 dollars for the first time so i flew an airplane when i was 14 for the first time what I think they're going to try to say, because there's still no motive, is that his eyesight was bad because he was drinking so much and he had become such an alcoholic, even though people say that he, maybe the alcohol has nothing to do with it. People say he, he, didn't, he wasn't really a drinker. People also say that he was a Trump supporter. 
people who had bumped into him and had actually spoke with him, like neighbors who called into Alex Jones, had said that he supported Trump. So this whole Antifa shit doesn't really make sense. <clears throat> but I think what happened is they're going to try to make it seem like he got into a lot of debt with his gamblings in, in the casino. He lost a lot of money. And at the same time, the um, Federal Aviation, uh, the FAA, had uh, basically refused him to get another pilot's license because his eyesight was so bad. And when you fly airplanes, you have to have perfect eyesight. It's, you can't even really wear glasses um, without certain exceptions. And I think they're going to state that he was such a pilot and that was like his hobby and his passion that he flipped out being in debt and he was no longer able to fly his airplanes that he freaked out. I don't know. That's just a thought. I thought about the same thing because I used to fly airplanes and I know it's a passion and a hobby. There is the story the FBI and Las Vegas officials along with MGM Brass has carefully curated the story that they need you to believe about that deadly night. There is the truth pasted together by FBI agents and intelligence veterans with evidence the FBI brass seemingly wants to keep far away from the public record. Neither story looks very similar. In fact, the official narrative has not held up to the test of time, even though the time frame has been just six months. This is the story they don't want folks to know, and soon you will understand why. FBI brass at every turn fought to conceal credible evidence that countered the official polished Las Vegas narrative. That includes painting Paddock as the sole mystery man of the attacks while shielding the identity of the real mystery man, Brian Hodge. Who is this man? Hodge is a 37-year-old Australian living in the United States, went from media witness to a person of interest almost overnight, quote-unquote, one FBI agent stated. Yet FBI brass led by Rouse, and this is the guy that supposedly had the adjoining room, one FBI agent said, almost overnight. Yet FBI brass led by Rouse, Ruse, refused agents' permission to interrogate Hodge, who soon fled the city after the attack but did eventually return, only to leave the country, then return again. Unbeknownst to Hodge and FBI brass, bureau insiders and intelligence veterans were ignoring a stand-down order and tracking Hodge, doing their job, great patriots, and they tailed him to many interesting places following the Las Vegas deadly shooting. More on that one later. Quote, he did a series of radio and media interviews in Australia that were compelling, the FBI insider said. Quote, he unknowingly divulged information during these interviews that only law enforcement knew about at that time, which was extremely recent to the shooting. The FBI source said Hodge described details of the attack and tools Paddock used that were only known to a handful of federal and local law enforcement officials at the time. We were still processing the crime scene, and Hodge was discussing evidence no one else could have known about, the FBI said. He was giving interviews to Australian media literally while this scene was unfolding. I'm talking minutes after Paddock's body was found in the suite. Hodge was live on air on his phone. With the difference in time zones between Las Vegas and Australia, Hodge was being piped into homes during prime time, approximately 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., which was literally at the time the Las Vegas mayhem was unfolding. Strangely, FBI agents noticed Hodge never spoke to any media in the United States, just to Australia. This is weird. How did the Australian media locate Hodge so quickly? Is it the Five Eyes? The Five Eyes is a group. Um, and we all know how much, they, especially with uh, Zuckerberg, Facebook CEO, selling off 500 million of his stock. He knows something's about to happen. The elites in D.C. are all going to um, doomsday camp scenario training and doomsday camps. And that was actually reported on MSM. But they all know that their censorship is not going to work. And um, people are furious. They're upset. Um, it's pretty crazy that uh, this guy right here isn't talked about, isn't like nobody like within the day they they stated like that it's 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 a fact Stephen Paddock was the only one well how the hell can anybody believe this how can any citizen or world citizen if you're listening from I know I have viewers in England to Australia to New Zealand to Sweden how can anybody believe this the eyes are on Joe Lombardo while he's stating that it's just him 
but they cannot give us a defining factor as to why he did it. There's no motive. Facebook has got all of our data. They're in trouble now for actually, if you have Facebook downloaded or if you have Messenger is worse. If you look at the amount of megabytes Facebook is and actually Messenger, if you remember a couple of years ago, Messenger was included in Facebook. It should be included in Facebook. It doesn't take 100 megabytes for the Messenger app. It should be included in the Facebook app. If you look at the what they're actually, if you look at the the permissions that these apps are getting, they're looking at your pictures, they're copying your pictures, they're copying at your actual texts. So this is all being looked into right now and hopefully Zuckerberg will go away in handcuffs, you know, I don't know. But um, let's get back into it. Hodge began to scrub his Facebook. The challenge for investigators is soon after the shooting. Hodge began to scrub his Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts, not only of Vegas-related posts, but of many more. He began deleting his online DNA, so to speak. One intelligence veteran said, even though we were told not to, we're able to recover many things that were deleted. Yeah, because they fucking keep all your information and data. But not before key facts were deciphered by agents. Hodge previously lived and worked in the casino industry on the Gold Coast of Australia. Another casino insider. Stephen Paddock's girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley, likewise previously lived and worked in the casino industry on the Gold Coast of Australia, sources said. Strange. Small world. Hodge's perhaps most revealing radio interview conducted by Triple M News in Melbourne. Really, intelligence veterans isolated immediate red flags after combining this interview, sources said. Raised eyebrows, FBI portion is below. concert was yeah so you know some of my team had already um gotten up to their room and they saw um when the when the shots were going off um obviously the crowd dispersed but they could see people physically getting shot and going down and uh, and not getting back up because obviously there was a lot of casualties in it it was really quite obvious all right all right hold on he was in the adjoining room that supposedly paddock had rented before but now True Pundit is claiming that he was in the adjoining room. With the window busted out also, was he part of it? Was he a fixer? If he didn't bust the window out at this time, he said he saw people going down at the venue, a dark venue 400 yards away from his room through double-paned outside mirrored glass. He could see physically people going down. This doesn't make sense what was going on but um you know now it's you know all the streets are shut down the police are still you know these blocks are still blocked off um and it's just a very quiet kind of weird fight i mean it's just it's not vegas you, you know people are people aren't just really saying anything there's people around people are hugging but there's not i don't know i don't know what to think about this guy this guy is uh we need to look uh, we need to look out for a lot of comments being made right now. Speaking to Brian Hodge, an Australian uh, who's been living in Vegas uh, for five years, who had the room next door to the shooter, we, we believe. Brian, did you have a balcony at the front of your room? And have you had a clear picture of what that image would have been like if someone decided to stand on the on the balcony with their balcony's next uh, door to it? Can you give us a picture of uh, of how he was able to cause so much destruction? So there wasn't, there's no balconies. He actually came, he checked in the hotel on Thursday and um, came with a, a specific hammer that was... That... How did this guy know that he came on Thursday? The original reports were that he was only there for a couple of days and um, Laura Loomer actually, in the public press conference, outed Lombardo saying we have receipts that there was another person staying in his room and that he had actually came three or four days previous to that what you're actually claiming that led Lombardo to say quote unquote stop asking questions stop asking your questions um, everybody has seen this that's watching this they all saw him upset that someone was actually asking real questions after that no outside press was allowed in besides that were vetted Las Vegas is an extremely corrupt city. Um, 
run by corrupt officials, um, police officers that kill people and get away with it, murder people and get away with it. Um, you should watch Jason Goodman's shows and uh, interviews with the maker of uh, what happened in Vegas. And this guy had been making this for two years. And he's a producer. He he worked on uh, Chris Angel's Mind Freak. I don't know his name off rip, but um, I haven't seen the video yet. I would love to see it. But from what he stated, he has been through some shit with Las Vegas uh, LVMPD. And then the shooting happened, and it tied all into the corruption, and, and it was it just wrapped his uh, his documentary up into a bow. The line to break that glass, um, you know, whatever the glass is that casino has over double pane or bulletproof or whatever it is, but was able to double pane glass and then actually shoot out through the glass that way, so cracked a massive big hole in the in the in the window pane. And uh, we understand he's been there since Thursday, so obviously uh, uh, clearly yeah. getting himself organised and up to uh, 10 guns, 10 rifles. Hey, Brian, can you tell us you're over there? You're this was right this that... was, This was was right after the shooting. Why did we not hear about this? Wow, guys. Wow, guys, this is a, this is this is this is long. I'm sorry that this is so long. I rant. Intelligence veterans isolated immediate red flags after combining this interview. Sources said Hodge details how victims were mowed down by gunfire below Mandalay Bay, as reported by his team. FBI sources said Hodge was likely staying alone at Mandalay Bay. Therefore, what team? What team? Intelligence agents tracked Hodge down after the shooting and never pinpointed any travel companions. Officials said. Hodge said Paddock used a special hammer to break the Mandalay Bay's double-pane glass prior to the attack. That is true. But how did Hodge know about the hammer? How did he know he didn't shoot, shoot it out with, with a rifle? Days before it was divulged to the public. How did Hodge know what kind of glass was employed by Mandalay Bay? How did Hodge know the glass was punched out with a hammer instead of gunfire? Remember, Hodge was divulging these details live in Australia via phone literally minutes after the attack. The shooting scene was over 400 yards away from Mandalay Bay. It was night. The venue was likewise dark, except for the stage area. How could Hodge alleged team who were supposedly fleeing... This is exactly what I said just minutes prior. I just said this. How could he see this from his room? Who were supposedly fleeing in the hotel in panic, see bodies dropping from 400 yards away in the dark through a mirrored exterior window. I said that. Hodge said he had the room next to Paddock. But that room, 32-134, was breached by Las Vegas Metro SWAT after Paddock was found dead on the other side of the door adjoining the two rooms. One large window was broken in Hodge's supposed room, to which police believe gunfire originated from. How did Hodge know when Paddock checked into the hotel suite? How did he know Paddock? Records show Hodge checked into Mandalay Bay the day before the shooting. How would he know Paddock checked in days earlier? He's part of Five Eyes. Five Eyes is UK... New Zealand, Australia, America, and there's one other, UK, which is like, okay, so let's, let's say like the UK, America, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, All right, This is the five eyes. So what the government does, because it's unconstitutional for your fourth amendment for uh, un un unlawful searches and seizures of your privacy, which Facebook and YouTube does at all points in time by collecting all your information. It's called the five eyes, guys. America will have another country that they're a part of through this five eyes. It's the CIA or NSA, basically, but it's it's through those five countries. They will look in. So let's say that the UK is looking in and they're, they're, they're collecting all our data. The U the U.S. has they don't have anything to do with it, so they could be looking and searching through your phone right now, and collecting information. That's how they collect information on you because the United States did, they had nothing to do. It's not us that's doing it. Oh, it's the Five Eyes. the The U.K. is the one that got all your information, which they in turn release the information to the U.S. and they all have access to it. It's fucked up, guys. It's real fucked up. It's corrupt. How did he know Paddock checked in days earlier? 
These are red flags you pick up while listening to Hodge's interviews, one FBI insider said. His testimony changes too, from interview to interview. You can see him adding new details, things that he never talked about initially. He's telling a story and adding new wrinkles. That's an important sign as well. Hodge makes several bizarre posts to his Facebook account in the immediate aftermath of the attack. He then deletes the post hours later. Among the strangest is the following, in which he claims that he is staying in room 3214, 32134, and Paddock was in 32135. The post is uploaded on October 2nd, 2017, at 0027 Pacific Standard Time, again amid the unfolding chaos at the Mandalay Bay. The shooter was next to me. His room is 32135, and I'm in room 32134. What the hell? Hodge elaborates on this revelation in his first media interview with Australian newspaper, The Daily Advertiser Story, which again was published amid the chaos in Las Vegas directly after it happened. Quote, he was approached by a woman who had a frantic look on her face and urged Mr. Hodge and his co-workers to run. At the woman's urging, Mr. Hodge rushed his team into an elevator and rode it down to the back of the casino. He and his team escaped from the hotel and hid in the bushes outside of the casino, ensuring they stayed close to the side of the building. Mr. Hodge said he saw flashes and then saw police who encouraged them to walk to the other side of the building with their hands above their heads. They were ushered back into the hotel, which was completely abandoned, and then, encountered, and then encouraged to walk down the Las Vegas Strip until they reached safety. Hodge in this interview maintains police ushered his group back to Mandalay Bay. But the hotel at the time was being evacuated. Also, Hodge claims his team was with him as he was walking or as he was taking the elevator to the 32nd floor, before he ushered people back into the elevator after a woman warned him of gunfire. But during radio interviews, Hodge said his team members were already back in their rooms witnessing people in the concert venue getting cut down by bullets. And how did Hodge know the shooter was next to his room, per the Facebook post, if he was ushered back into the elevator long before he reached his room at the opposite end of the hallway? Also, it's important to note that the Daily Advertiser in Australia published the story during the time frame when Hodge claimed he was still hiding in the bushes outside Mandalay Bay. Right away, what the hell? In another Australian news account, I'm reading this brand new. I have not read this story yet, guys. This is all, when I, when I make videos, it's all right when I'm making it because that's the best time that my brain can give you my analysis of, of what I know and I think it, it, it makes for a better recording. In another Australian news account published just an hour later in the Courier and Mail, Hodge said the shooter was next to his room with a machine gun. Another Australian man saying at the Mandalay Bay has spoken about his close call with the Las Vegas gunman, claiming he launched his murderous attack from the room next door. Australian Brian Hodge, who previously worked at Jupiter's Casino on the Gold Coast, claimed he was staying in the room next to the shooter on Level 32 at Las Vegas Resort. There were multiple people dead and multiple shooters. I was just hiding, waiting for the police to come get us. We were hiding in the bushes outside, waiting for the police. Mr. Hodge said he was staying in the 32134 room while the gunman was in room 32135. It was a machine gun from the next room to me, he said. My floor is a crime scene. They killed a security guard on my floor. Whoa! They killed a security guard on my floor. Huh. Host... Jesus Campos got shot in the leg, and on his radio chatter, it says that he thought he got shot by a BB. If there's live gunfire, and what they're purporting that hundreds of rounds went through the door, would Jose Campos really radio over saying that, I think I got shot by a BB gun or a pellet gun? What the hell is going on, guys? FBI sources point out here that Hodges' account had flipped. Now, according to his testimony to the Courier and Mail, the shooting started from the suite next to his room, and the shooter was firing off what sounded like a machine gun. Listen, guys, when I watched this, I was drunk. I woke up through the night. I turned on my TV. This was happening. I posted on Facebook. It sounded like belt-fed machine gun fire. That's when I looked at my actual police scanner that I have. Everybody can download this app. It's Scanner Radio. Um, they've really censored it a lot, and uh, Las Vegas is actually going to make it so no civilians can hear any any of the police chatter, which is bullshit. Obviously shows that they have something to hide. But my broadcastify notifications and what I heard was that there were multiple shooters because this was still going on when I woke up. It was it was fresh. It only happened like 20 minutes before I woke up and turned the TV on. 
multiple shooters, multiple hotels. Luxor, um, they claimed uh, disturbances. They said there was a shooter at the Tropicana. Uh, they said there was explosives, which is probably the tannerite they found in the van at the uh, where where he parked his car. Um, yeah, so there were multiple shooters it, at multiple motels. I understand people get crazy like when shootings happen and they go they go nuts, but there's video online from other hotels where people are in the lobby and there's glass broken all over and people are told to sit down. Um, there's also people saying that it felt like they were being chased. And what happened at Hooters? Why were like 48 counted uh, ambulances get, gathering in front of the Hooters? And people at the Hooters said that there were shooters in the Hooters. The public re report that a security guard had been shot. One FBI source said, we wanted to know how Hodge knew this information at such an early stage and why he thought the guard was killed. There was an early report that one police officer had been shot, but Hodge specifically mentioned a security guard. That's certainly worth following up. Also, federal law enforcement sources note that Hodge never mentioned arriving on the 32nd floor via the elevator. Instead, he was in the hotel room when the shooting began. The same hotel room with the broken window and a pair of new gloves found lying on the bed. Paddock was wearing his gloves when he was found dead. And he was also wearing the same exact clothes that were videotaped on the videotapes released in the New York Times of supposedly him for a couple weeks before it happened in the same exact clothes. So supposedly Paddock never switched his clothes. In the Sydney Morning Herald, Hodge claimed police escorted him out of the hotel and told the gunman was in room 32135, just one room away from his room. I'm just glad it didn't make it back to my room. I'm just glad I didn't make it back to my room, Hodge said, failing to mention details about that. So is what is is he claiming right here? I'm glad I didn't make it back to my room. So he said that during the shooting, he said that he was in his room watching people drop, but the room that he busted into was the room with the other actual window busted out. It, this is making absolutely no sense. I'm just glad I didn't make it back to my room, Hodge said, failing to mention details about the elevator or being next to Paddock when the shooting com com commenced or hiding in the bushes. FBI agents wanted a chance to question Hodge about his ever-evolving eyewitness accounts. Was he next to the shooter or in the elevator? Was his room actually somewhere else in the hotel and Hodge was just grandstanding or spreading misinformation as a cover? How did he know about the special hammer found in Paddock's room days before law enforcement divulged the fact to the public? Even the cabal of retired FBI agents and current intelligence officials echo similar Hodge-related red flags to Las Vegas FBI brass and LVMPD in the weeks following the shooting, urging officials to greenlight the federal interrogation of Hodge. Intelligence agents sought permission to question him at his workplace or apartment in Los Angeles, but officials refused, FBI sources said, to the dismay of many. But why was Hodge untouchable? Even the fact of that room Hodge, even the, f the fact that the room Hodge maintains he rented had camera wires running from a food cart in the hallway, which the FBI maintains paddock set up as security cameras in each room into Hodge's room. Three, two, one, three, four, Hodge's room. There's so much physical evidence here that warrants Hodge as a person of interest that it's hard to believe he wasn't told to stay in Las Vegas after the shooting for questioning, one FBI source said, especially if what we know about his cell phone, how he masked his Facebook and all his social media and everything and turned off his location and basically became invisible. What did the FBI know about Hodge's phone? The three or four hours he said he was hiding in the bushes outside Mandalay Bay, one FBI uh, insider said, we ran his cell phone during and after the shooting. He wasn't anywhere near Mandalay Bay after the shooting. So if he wasn't hiding in the bushes, where the hell was he while he was giving radio and newspaper interviews to foreign media about surviving the massacre? Turns out he went to great lengths to keep his locations hidden, but the FBI knows. And you will too in the next story. Part dun dun dun. Yeah. True Pundits, Fear and Lying in Las Vegas series. Sorry this was so long, guys. I 
will try to not comment so much. I, you know, I try to comment just so it's not like, I don't know. I don't want to just like read stuff off. I, I want to bring conjecture to the conversation and, and, and bring facts that I know about and, you know, kind of have a conversation with you guys. So I'm so sorry. If you guys made it this far, God bless you guys. I love you so much. I'm so sorry I took up freaking 40 minutes of your time, but I love you guys. Um, you guys are all hawks. You guys are hawk guys. Keep an eye on the situation. Keep an eye on everything. Comment down in the uh, comments and uh, like, share, and subscribe. I love you guys. Until the next one, have a great day.